Okay, X-Traders, so we're going to look at some of uh, the most basic tools, but uh, also the most helpful tools in TradingView. So you may have seen some of these, you may have not, uh, and I'm here to help you out with the ones that I use the most, of course. So um, you have the toolbar over here on the left, right? You have all these uh, different uh, subfolders or submenus of tools that you can use. And um, this first one, has uh, the line, uh, you can favorite them by the way if you click on this star. So it has the horizontal line, uh, the horizontal ray, which I use, actually I don't use the horizontal line so much. So um, the parallel channel, definitely use it. Um, I'm starting to look into regression uh, channel, so I'll go ahead and favorite that maybe for later. Uh, and the ray, I actually wanted to talk about the ray because, uh, let me see, there's any other ones? No, not so many. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about the ray as opposed to the trend line, which is obviously very common, so should be favorited. Um, so we will actually compare those two. And in here we have the Fibonacci, the retracement and the extensions, which are different, uh, and the pitchfork. So we'll probably look at these three, the retracement and the extensions and the pitchfork. And no, I don't really use any of these, so no, we'll focus on these first, uh, the first ones um, in here, sometimes the path, but the rectangle, uh, sometimes I'll use a rectangle to denote a zone, a price, a price zone instead of a, uh, a single static price level, uh, I'll use a zone such as a supplier demand zone uh, or a trading zone. So, uh, the circle, you know what? I actually do use the circle, um, not as much as the path, but I, I do use uh, the circle sometimes, uh, the path maybe to say something like, you know what, here's what I don't like about the path. Uh, I, I'll start drawing things like, okay, so it'll go up and it'll go down, you know, and, and I'll try to use like the support and resistance levels where I think it might bounce off of and, and maybe it'll come and do this, but you know what, then in the end, it's... Um, I mean, sometimes they do play out, but sometimes they don't, not at all. So it, it's just kind of like guessing, or too much guessing, if you will. Uh, arrow markers, yes, I, I do use the arrow. This is probably the one that I use the most out of this submenu. Uh, not so much price notes or comments, callouts, no. Arrow marker and the circle. I will use these, but mostly to mark something and show or share to somebody else. Well, I use a circle to like say, okay, you know, maybe it'll bounce off of this level. Uh, I'm expecting it to reach, you know, uh, this bottom here, or I'll use the arrow marker to say uh, it'll probably reach this support or resistance um, at some point, you know, and then I'll go ahead and mark it and send it off to somebody else, you know, uh, or share it like on the Discord or something like that. But th that's really the only reason that I use, uh, let's say, uh, these uh, these tools: the marker, the arrow marker, and the circle. I don't really use much of anything else in here, to be honest. Nope. Uh, so these are the submenus I use the, the least. And then here we have the head and shoulders, of course. Very good price pattern, very common price pattern. I use it. It's one of the price patterns with the highest degree uh, of probability of, uh, of uh, happening. Uh, uh, triangle patterns, yeah. And then sometimes maybe the three drivers, uh, three drives pattern. But... Uh, head and shoulders, I definitely use. It's not favorited, but I do use it a lot. Um, probably too much, to be honest. Um, but it has, like I said, it's the, the, it has the highest degree of probability of, of playing out, uh, uh, more so than the double bottom, triple bottom, flags, pennants, you know, whatever, triangles. So uh, for that reason, <clears throat> it's uh, one of my favorites. Um, there's like some statistic charts going around the internet. Uh, I'll probably post some. Uh, sometime later, later um, which tell you the percent probability of uh, these different price patterns playing out. I haven't ever really tested myself, so I'm guessing I'm just going to go on and uh, uh, and believe what uh, other people might have actually tested. Triangle pattern, like I said, it's very common, so yeah, sometimes I'll throw it on there, uh, but uh, not much else there. And then here, yes, definitely the long and the short position. These I use all the time. Now, of course, these are at the end, you know, uh, whether it's a long or a short trade that you're going to put on after I've used my trend lines, my rays, my uh, pitchforks, my price patterns, uh, head and shoulders, whatever. Uh, I'll 
come down here and I will say, okay, so I'll, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, uh, go long on this or short on that. And I'll go ahead and throw this tool on. So we'll definitely cover that one. And uh, never really use this at all. Oh, it's got a Linux penguin in there. Cool. Okay. Um, and then the measure tool. Yes, I, I do use this one. Um, to bas basically to measure. So uh, let me give you an example. What uh, kinds of things I measure. Uh, flags and uh, cup and handles. So let me see. This doesn't look like a very good cup and definitely not a good handle so I'll just go ahead and draw this flag here let's say that this thing let's say that this thing is flagging right so this is the flag pole I'm gonna go ahead and, and taking it up here and um, let's say that I'm gonna go ahead and try to, to draw a fl uh, flag which I'm surprised is not a tool on trading view uh, seeing as how a lot of people like it uh, I'll go ahead and clone this Right, so I'm going to clone the flagpole, and this gives me the height of the next flagpole, or basically my price target, if you will. So I would place this on top of here, uh, but of course you don't want to place it really from the top of the flag. Uh, more conservatively, place it at the bottom or the middle. I'll use the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and clone this one as well, so that I actually properly draw the flag, kind of like so. And I'll go ahead and drag this down here there we go so there I have a price target right perfect now in this case because I cloned it then it's very easy or very simple to um, you know I don't really have to measure you know that's simply my price target so you know it doesn't I'll go ahead and I'll you know I'll set whenever I want to get into the trade uh, and then once I set it uh, let's say that I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these volume profile levels I like that a lot I like that volume profile indicator so I'll go ahead and click on there I'll immediately uh, extend this to my price target and I'll again try to use that pro volume profile right about there yep for my stop loss there we go I mean actually I'm gonna see if this uh, if there's another level um, earlier so let me Hmm, let me 30 minute. And then there's one. I could use that. Although it might be above. I'm not sure. Let me go ahead and get my my horizontal array here. Um actually I like this level better. It's got resistance, support, support, some resistance, and uh resistance right there. Yeah, I'm I'm liking that level. So that's gonna be my stop loss right there. Um yeah. There we go. Okay, so um, back to my measuring tool. Um, you could use it to measure something like the flat, the height of the flagpole, right? In this case, five sixty-three, five dollars sixty-three cents. If you wanted to draw, let's say, a new one, uh, but like I like I showed you guys, basically what I do is I'll just go ahead and clone it, and that's a lot more accurate. And I'll get the 563 exactly instead of measuring it and then having to draw a new trend line to you know to stand in for the flagpole uh, it's just a lot easier but then there are other situations where you don't get to clone like that so uh, let me give you an example mm, let me look for that pattern I was telling you guys about uh, cup and handle no, that doesn't look very good Ooh, maybe no well, that could be one. It's really sloppy, but it might work. I mean, it's just for illustrative purposes, right? So I'll go ahead and use the highlighter. This is a, Sometimes I use this tool, but let's say that that's the cup and that would be the handle, but that doesn't really work at all uh, because, as you can clearly see, the beginning of the cup is way higher. Um, you know what? Yeah, I could. Okay. Let's just say that this is the bottom of the cup, right? So this is where you would use the measuring tool. But I don't like this uh, after hours, so I'm going to erase that. I'm going to try to shrink. Oh, okay, I remember. This is why I don't like the highlighter tool. You can't shrink it. Um, so I have to redraw it. So I'm just going to redraw it without taking into account extended hours trading. So that would be my cup. And there's the top of the wick, so that kind of works better. And there's the handle. Now that one didn't play out, but whatever. Here's the measuring tool. You'd measure from the bottom of your cup. All right, uh, let's say from here, and 
from the bottom of the cup, you would measure up to the top of the cup, which would be right there. That's $2.11. So that would be your target price from the handle. Now, you could draw uh, a trend line, but then you'd have to know, you know, you could draw it and then just copy it over or whatever or move it over. So let's say that you would have drawn this uh, and you'd have to measure like how high that you know trend line is, make sure that it's 211. So that would be 231, 211. There we go. So it'd be like that. So then you could shrink the, you know, the, um, the, uh, the trend line or you could just mark it like this and shrink it, right? But that's obviously a lot more work. So... I don't really have to draw the trend line here. I could just I could have just used the measuring tool, and then with the measuring tool mark my price target like I did with the ray. So that's what I would use the measuring tool. You measure the distance you want, which is 211 right here, and then you just go ahead and measure it from the uh, top of the from the bottom of the handle all the way to the top, and then draw your price target. You know, with a ray or a line or whatever, and then you could go ahead and draw your long position tool. Uh, where you want it to. So that's what I would use uh, that measuring tool for. I do use it every now and then. Uh, let me get rid of these ads. And uh, the zoom tool. Yeah, I, I sometimes I'll use this. I'll see if I can find an example for it. But the magnet and the drawing, uh, the draw, uh, what's it called? The lock drawing mode or whatever. And the magnet tool are very handy. Okay, this will lock in whatever drawing mode you're in. So like if you have a tool selected, let me give you an example. If I select the ray right here, right, here's my horizontal ray, and let's say that I want to draw a lot of rays. So I draw one here, I gotta go back because it switched me back to the crosshairs. Right? So if I lock the drawing mode, okay, so if I click on this, and then I'll go click my tool, I can click that, use that ray, and then I can keep clicking, and it's still in ray mode. Right? So I can keep you know clicking and clicking and clicking. I can draw ray after ray after ray if I use that tool locking uh, mode feature. So that's very handy. Um, the uh, This one I don't really use it, but the magnet tool, yeah, the magnet tool is the other one. So let me give you an example, and we'll actually use it later on with the pitchfork. Oops, sorry, with the pitchfork. So let me give you an example. If you take, let's say, a uh, trend line. No, you know what? Yeah. So if you try to hover over, you see that it snaps to the candles and the wicks, right? It'll it'll snap to either the open, the high, the low, or the close of whatever candle you're looking at, depending on you know how close how close to it you are. But it'll definitely select whatever candle you are on, and it'll snap to uh, to that part of the candle. Right, so like right here, let me see. I'm gonna click. Uh, oh, wait a minute. This is the wrong tool. Sorry, it's not what I wanted. Yeah, um, I I use the trend line tool. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. What I want is the. Okay. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to use the trend line because it's not necessarily straight, but. Uh, let me use the, here we go, the ray. That's better. Okay. So uh, I'm going to pick this here. It's the bottom of the candle body. Uh, here's the top of the candle body. Here's the top of the wick. So the high of the day. So that got snapped right to the top of the day, right? That's on the 30 minute. Okay. So here we are. Let me go ahead and pick one. Uh, let me go out to the daily. Okay, so let me switch over to the ray, take the magnet off. I'm going to, let's say that I'm going to try to set the ray at the top of this candle, right, at the wick. All right, so there it is. It kind of looks like it's at the top of the wick. Uh, but the problem is that when you zoom in, then you realize that it's not, right? It's not at the top of the wick, and that can cause issues if you're trying to draw targets, and uh, you're trying to set your uh, long and short uh, positioning tools. So uh, this is something that I need to learn how to use properly. Uh, whenever I zoom out, there we go. Okay. Zooming out and zooming back in. Let me use the zoom tool here, actually. There. All right. So you can see 
that it's not really on the top of that wick, right? Uh, it's close, but it's not quite there. Um, so let me go ahead and show you now with the magnet. Okay, and then we'll be able to compare both of those. Uh, let me go back to the time frame where I was on. Okay. Okay. That's the line right there at 2526. So I can find this and just shrink this here. And oh, I thought that was it. There we go. Okay, so that's the one. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in here. And you don't even have to zoom in all the way. And I'm going to turn on my magnet tool this time. And I click on the ray. And now I'm going to hover over it. And it's going to pick there. That's the candle that I want. I'm going to click on that. And that sets the ray. Okay, and that's going to snap to either the high or the top of the can of the body, or if I was on the bottom of the candle, it would snap to the bottom of the body or to the wick, All right, the bottom part of the wick. So depending on where around the candle you are, if you're at the top, it'll either pick the top of the wick or the top of the body. If you're below the candle, it'll pick the bottom of the wick or the bottom of the body. Okay, but it'll snap exactly to that price level. So let me show you now, if I zoom in, all right, I'm going to zoom in quite a bit here so we can see the difference. <clears throat> and you can see that they're, they're, they're not exactly aligned. The first one that I put on is this one, right? It's way above the top of the wick. The second one is down here is perfectly on the wick. It's exactly 2458, which you can match it up with the high of the day, which is 2458 up on the top. Uh, left there. Okay, so that is a very useful feature. I'm going to use it a lot with the pitchfork, which I'm going to use in a bit, uh, but you can use it with others. Okay, so uh, the locking tool and the magnet tool. Um, all right, so let's actually go ahead and let me remove some of these and let's actually go ahead and look at some of the um, above tools that I mentioned, like the pitchfork and the fibs. Let me shrink this down and let me find a good place to use this at. So uh, maybe not so much up here. Let me see if I can get a better place to use. I don't want to use it here. I'm going to use it right here. As you can see, I'm going to, I already had this drawn in, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, pretend like I'm doing this again. Uh, because what I want is to actually use the, the difference between the trend line and the ray, right? So the, here, what we want is, um, let me give you an example, because that's what I would use a trend line for, for drawing something like a flag or some sort of a shape that isn't in trading view, uh, but not so much for trend lines, actually. Uh, and here's the reason why. Let me go ahead and show you what happens when I pick a point like this, right? So this is a very common thing to do. You'll pick a point, and you'll say, okay, I want to draw a trend, a downtrend line from here, and I'll try to catch this other, you know, touch right there and three touches right there, right? Let me switch this to one. So you'll be like, okay, so I'm catching three touches. One, two, three. Perfect. This is a great trend line. I like it. All right. Now, eventually, price moves away from the trend line, and your mind wants to force the trend line to move in order to catch a different touch such as that wick uh, right because now it's touching that that body and that wick but it's missing this one and that one so and then when it moves even further now you're missing everything right so when you are able to move the trend line or the line in any which direction you want it's it's kind of like a fake you know you're it's like you're tricking yourself into moving the trend line uh, in a way that is not, um, you know, kosher or not proper, right? Uh, because here you were touching three, but now you're only touching two. So uh, that's what I don't like about the trend line, because you can, you know, your brain uh, f makes you force uh, uh, touches which are not 
as strong. You could even do something like this, and you're touching one, two, three, right? Two, three. And then you would just say, okay, well, this is just like a big breakout, you know, right here. It just went up above that. And, and although sometimes it might work, sometimes it doesn't. You know, so I, I that's why I don't like using the trend line for using for drawing those kinds of support and resistance levels. Dynamic support and resistance, I like um, using this ray. And I saw JTW do this um, on the podcast, which are highly recommended, by the way. Uh, they're on the Discord server and they're now live and streamed, so you have video and audio and everything. Okay, so with the with the ray, you touch that first point and you touch a second point and it forces the line in that direction at that angle right so whenever something goes above it then you know that it's a breakout right and you're not going to try to fiddle with the line because you won't be able to right because you need to you, it basically anchors two points your first and, and your last point right and so now then something like this would be more like a sideways channel which is another tool that we're going to look at, which is the parallel channel. So you went in a downtrend, and you switched over to a uh, a sideways trending channel or a horizontal channel, right? And then you started another downtrend, right? And and it's all because the ray forces you to look at the actual trend between two points and not, you know, uh, let your imagination run free as to where it could touch and which ones count as touches etc etc so I really like the ray I highly recommend you guys using it especially when you're drawing some sort of a uh, uptrend or downtrend line uh, like a like a, a dynamic support or resistance such as this one it'll force you to look at the trend and it'll shrink it in size it'll tell you this was an actually very short uh, downtrend and then now here's that sideways uh, channel and so on and so forth so uh, the trend and the channel sorry, the ray uh, and the channel, uh, very useful tools, and I definitely separate the use of the ray from the use of the trend line. Uh, they have their nuance uh, uh, uses, and I've, um, I'm actually quite happy uh, using the ray now, more so than the trend line. Okay, so uh, we saw the ray and the uh, parallel channel. Now let me go back to this area here. Um, Okay, let me see, because we're going to, we need to cover other ones, and then actually the parallel channel, as you'll see here, we can actually uh, draw it this way as well. Um, uh, you, you, it doesn't just have to be horizontal, it could be diagonal, like this, right, and uh, sometimes you'll see that uh, that also works. It, it, it also looks very similar to, like, Bollinger Bands or, or VWAP or... Uh, KY lines or KB lines, I don't know what the other indicator, there's a whole bunch of indicators that are like one or two standard deviations from the mean or whatever. And it's basically just giving you, you know, um, uh, the mean line, the median line, and then the, the two extremes within where you want to uh, bounce. Now, what I like about this is very visual, if you think about it. Um, you've always, you know, you, you'll hear it and you read it everywhere. You want to be into a trade at the bottom, not at the middle. You don't want to fiddle in the middle, okay? You want to go long on the bottom or short at the top. Those are the two places you want to get into trades. You don't want to be taking trades in the middle. If it reaches the top, you take a short, right? And if you take a short, if it goes back to the middle line, then you offload one out of two or one out of three or one quarter, whatever, however many contracts you want, right? If you take it in the, you don't take it in the middle. You take profits in the middle. Okay, when it reaches the top again, then you'll go. You'll be able to take a new short. But if it's in the middle, the on, the only thing you should be doing is taking profits. Okay, at the top, you take a short. You can enter a new trade. In the middle, you don't want to enter a new trade. You just want to exit a trade. All right. So remember that. Don't fiddle in the middle. You can take longs at the bottom, shorts at the top, and that's it. The only thing you do in the middle is take profits, right? And you can leave runners if you want, and that's fine. You know, if it bounces off the middle, then you can go ahead and, and leave runners. So you can see how it, you know, bounced off of it, and then it bounced off the top. You can take another short, and it goes down. When it reaches the middle, you can take 
uh, some profit, wait for it to run all the way to the bottom, and then you can enter, you can close out the old position and enter a new one, right? Because it's at the bottom. The, the probability of it bouncing back towards the middle or towards the top is a lot bigger than when you're in the middle. Um, okay, so that is uh, one of the very, uh, one of the things that I like most about channels is it's a very visual way to tell me, you know, this is when you should be entering or exiting or, more importantly, not, not, not doing anything, right, in a trade. Okay, so we looked at uh, trend line rays, horizontal rays. Um, oh yeah. Okay, so fibs. There's retracements and extensions, and pitchforks. Those are the ones we're going to look at today. So, uh, like I said, let me go ahead and see if I can find a better spot and clear some of these out. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah. There we go. Um, I could probably use that. Fib retracements, okay. So, the retracement, as the name implies, you're trying to find where something that already extended is going to retrace to. So, for example, from this bottom, the trend was up. This is actually when it started back in 2020, I believe, AI, um, this company. So, it started trading, and it went all the way up, but nothing goes straight up. It always retraces. So it reaches a level, and then it retraces. It comes back down. So let me extend this. It doesn't matter if you extend this horizontally. As long as the levels match the bodies or the wicks, whichever you're going to use, if this goes up, it's going to retrace. Everything always retraces. Don't forget that. So this retracement tool is basically going to tell us what are the Fibonacci levels to which retracements are likely to happen. All right, because they're, these are just patterns that repeat, right? In nature and in, in everything, they repeat, and they can go down to 50 or 61.8 or 78.6. All right, you, those are the numbers that are on the right side. That is the percentage to which it has retraced. If it goes all the way to the bottom, it basically retraced 100%. Right? At the first level it retraces, retraces to is 23.6%, which is 157.46. All right, it could also retrace to. 38.2%, all right? Now, the next level is 50%, and the 50% level is one of the more uh, well-known or used levels, the 50% retracement and the 61.8, 78.6. Those are the ones that, um, that are the most common, and those can help you draw support and resistance levels. Okay, that's the whole point of this. Now, you can also go top to bottom, and sometimes I see people you know, get confused, and they're doing something like this, top to bottom. And they're like, oh, should I have done it like that? Well, then it doesn't make sense, because, you know, if this went up to 100%, which is 178.63, a retracement of 78.6 doesn't make sense, right? Let me, let me, let me show you, let me, let me give you a clear example. This is going up from top, from bottom to top. It retraces 23.6%. Right? So 158.07 is 23.6 less than 178.13. That is a 23.6% retracement. It went up and it retraced backwards. So you draw it from the top to the bottom and you expect it to retrace top to bottom. Right? Like drawing a letter A. It goes up and then it comes down. It retraces down to 23.6. Okay? Do not get confused drawing these things top to bottom. You draw them bottom to top when the trend is up and you want to see how much it retraced down. You draw it top to bottom when you're going for a trend down. So this is the wrong way to draw this because it went from 192 all the way, sorry, it's from 92 all the way to 177 and then back 78%? That doesn't make sense. That's not a 78.6% retracement uh, off of 177, right? It doesn't make sense, so that's drawn wrong. If you're going up, you want to go bottom to top. Now, when do you use it top to bottom? There is a moment at which you use it top to bottom, and it is, of course, when you're in a downtrend. You want to, This thing has been moving from, let's say, from the top here all the way to the bottom, like so, 
right? So let me go ahead and it's gone from here all the way down to here, right? There. It goes up, down, up, it goes down to all these places, right? To every spot, to each one of the lows that you can find, but you pick one. So it went from top to bottom, right? But it's not going to keep going down straight down. It's going to retrace on its way down. So if it goes down here, it retraces 23%. That would be 128.56, which is that first level, right? The red one that we saw earlier. That is what the retracements mean. 23.6 is the first retracement level, the first Fibonacci retracement level. Okay, and then it has all the other ones, 38, 2, the 5, the 61, 8, as much as you want. Okay, so when you're going from the top to the bottom, it means that it's in a downtrend, and you want to see how much it's going to bounce back up. Right, so if we're going to go all the way down, up, down, it retraces, down, it retraces, down, and it keeps going, right? It never goes straight down. So every time that it hits a bottom, it will retrace. How much is it going to retrace to? Okay, so it hit that 48 and it retraced to 78. That's a 23% retracement. You can see there's a wick here, a little bit of resistance, right, right there, and it looks like that resistance uh, served here as well with a little wick there. So that is a 23.6% level Fib retracement. So that is the retracement. The extension is different. The extension is how much is it going to extend in the trend direction, right? Instead of how much it's going to retrace or come back from the trend, the extensions is how far it's going to go up. But the way you use this is, or the reason you use this, is when there is not enough history and uh, moving forward, okay? So for example, let's say that you're here. Let me make sure I grab this tool. You started here, right? And it went up, and that's the next high, and then it comes down, right? And you wanna know if it's gonna go up. You can see it's got the same numbers as before, the same Fibonacci numbers, right? So you go low, high, and then you pick another low. These are the same numbers as you can see as before, but then after the one, there's one, six, one, eight, two, six, one, eight, etc. Right? And those are the extension levels. Those are the ones that we want to place. Now, let me see if I can place them. So we want to pick a bottom, and you can always extend this as long as you're grabbing the bottom of that red candle back there. Okay? So it went down, and you want to see if it's going to go up, but you don't have all that history or, yeah, all that price action. You only have, let's say, up to here. All right? It reached up, here you can see the, the three points, one, two, three, right there, right? Okay, that's the bottom, that's the last point, right there. And you don't know if it's gonna go, how much higher it's gonna go, because the last point you have is not high enough, right? Which would be right here, right there. Okay, you are already above the highest high you've had, you know, the all-time high. Once you reach your all-time high or all-time low, because you can also use it to the downside, you don't know where it's going to go. You can't go back and look at swing levels, high levels, demand, and supply zones, and patterns, and whatnot, right? <clears throat> because it simply doesn't exist. So let's say that you wanted to find out, well, it we just broke the highest high or the all-time high. What level is it going to go to? That's what the 168 and the 2618 sorry, the 1618 and the 2618 are four. Okay, they are after the one. All right, so let's say that this is the one that we're going to pick as our low target, or our, our third point, our last point. Then these are the numbers that we're going to use as fib extensions. All right, so let's see here. For example, here, we're here. Here's a low, right? So let's grab my ray tool. And let me show you. If we were here, we'd say, okay, so that's a level, and we can go back a few weeks or months or years and say, okay, this is another level, right? So we have a low level now, and, you know, 
some time back, we can use this as a price target because we are expecting it to go back up to that level, right? And that is how we normally draw support and resistance. And as you move forward in time, you can find more of these support and resistance levels, right? Whether you use swing levels or uh, pivots or, um, you know, whatever uh, supply and demand zones, that is how we figure out our price targets because we have historic targets. But when we don't have a history, right, because it's a new stock and it does this, it hits a bottom, starts going up, and then for at a place like this, well, we don't have any price targets to the to the upside, so we can't use any. That is when we use uh, the levels on the extensions. All right, and the last one we're going to look at is the pitchfork. So let me go ahead and um, there's many different kinds of pitchforks, but um, yeah, I kind of did want to see these other ones, but I'll leave them for another video. Let me just look for, because this is getting to be a long one, let me look for a place to use pitchforks. Um, the reason I like pitchforks is because it's kind of like a parallel channel with some guidance, right? So let me grab pitchfork. And you're going to get a, a, a low and a high and a low. Three points, just like the fib extensions and the fib retracements, right? And when you do that, it gives you this well, a pitchfork, right? And it's got that red median line, and then it's got two green and two blue, which is basically two channels, a green channel in the middle and a blue channel around the green channel. So you get those three points, the low, high, low, and those are the ones that we're going to set. All right, so let me go ahead and just show you that it kind of looks like this, All right? It's just a wider or multi-level parallel channel. Right. Um, hold on a second. I oh, this is the regression tool line. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. Okay. So it's basically a parallel channel with an extra level, right? An extra channel within it. All right. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> sorry, actually use the pitchfork. Okay. Then let me get this out of the way. Yeah. Okay. So. We grab our pitchfork and remember three points, the low, the high, and the low. So we're going to pick uh, this low here, this high all the way up here, and this low right there. And click. And so there we go. There's our pitchfork. Okay, so it's telling us that those are the channels or lines that the price action should, you know, um, move through in the future, right? And just like with the parallel channel, you'll want to stay, uh, bit, you know, stay away, and not fiddle in the middle, and um, uh, basically take your trades uh, on either the blue channel or the green channel lines, right? Lows at the bottom, I mean, longs at the bottom and shorts at the top. Okay, so that is basically what a pitchfork is, and uh, there's different kinds, but we're we're only going to stick to this one right now. Let me, let me use it to show you how uh, it has fared in the past using a pitchfork. You can use it to the upside or you can use it to the downside. It doesn't matter. Uh, let me shrink this price action a bit here. And uh, here we go. Okay, this downtrend. Okay, so let me grab my pitchfork tool. I go from here from a high to a low too high, right, because we're going down this time, and there we go, that's our pitchfork, okay, um, now as you can see here, the red median line is right here, and it did serve as resistance and support right there, hold on a second, let me make this bigger, because I don't know why I have it so small, okay, there we go, that's a lot better, okay, so you can see here, uh, it served as support right here, although this is before we drew our last point, so that was invalid, but it did it did respect it, you know, both the bottom and the middle. Uh, but then here you can see it definitely respected the middle. It used support and resistance, then resistance again, breakthrough, broke through, but then immediately broke back down, and then served as resistance, 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 and when it finally breaks through, uh, it does go above, and then it serves again as support, 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 
and um, it keeps on doing that until it tries to, and does break through the next one and also uses it as support and then finally breaks out so as you can see it you know it respects the basically the symmetry of price action in the market so um, that is how you use a pitchfork and uh, I won't look at the other types of pitchforks but you can use them there's pitchforks for uh, sideways movement right it's not only for up and down trends it's also for uh, when you have a, a choppy horizontal or sideways market you can also use it in those situations okay so um, go ahead and get rid of these and basically um, that is it for uh, the most used tools I'll try to use uh, uh, I'll try to get into more of these in future videos uh, the ones I missed and uh, some of the details of the ones I didn't miss uh, so let's like for example the magnet tool for the pitchfork it basically snaps to the wicks and the bodies like that uh, and then we'll switch this over to the different types of pitchforks in a later video okay but this is basically how uh, like I mentioned earlier you would use the magnet tool on something like a pitchfork tool because it definitely helps um, snap to those levels uh, more closely instead of having you you know zoom in uh, quite a bit onto each one uh, on the different time frames okay so uh, that is basically what you would use from here on in to see what the price action is going to do for AI in the next few uh, days and weeks to come all right you basically expect it to stay in between here uh, it, you can see that it bounced off of that uh, median line quite nicely. Let me see what's the wick. Did it bounce? No, that's. I think that's actually the flag uh, trend line that I drew. Let me go ahead and erase that uh, line from down here. There we go. So it did wick up a little bit, but it, it didn't quite reach the median line. But that's what I would expect it to do. I would expect it to hit the median line and then just, you know, pinball between that one and the green one. And when it does reach the green one, I would take a long, a long here towards the top, right, uh, of this green channel or, or if it reached the blue line at the bottom. But I would definitely just take profits here in the middle, uh, maybe one or two, and then it... If anything, let it ride all the way up to the blue uh, part of the channel. All right, so that's how you would use a pitchfork and the magnet tool. All right, so uh, I think that's about what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, like I said, we'll look into more details on these pitchforks uh, in a future video and uh, maybe a couple other tools that I missed, like the three drives pattern and the... Um, the head and shoulders and oh and this regression one yeah I knew I wanted to cover the regression one I'll go ahead and look at that one and these ones over here as well um, and some other ones okay so uh, yeah these are my favorite so don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, and uh, that way you'll be notified and I hope to see you in the next video have a great one make some green see you next time